we're going to make rain today. Are you excited? Yeah, you've been sitting for a while, so let's try again. I'm going to divide this room up. This is number one, so first two sections here. And then let's take the middle from here to here, your number two. Go with me on this. I know the students in the audience, they're going to get excited. And then over here, let's go with number three. Let's divide you into three sections. It doesn't have to be exact lines, right? Okay. And you're going to follow my lead, and you're going to do as I do. And here, we're going to make it rain today. So you're going to have to be able to use your hands okay, and use your feet. Are you ready? If you want, and you don't have to, but if you are able, you can stand on your feet as well. Don't be so intimidated in this space. Let's make rain. Here we go. You're going to do as I do. <laughs> That's the instruction, and you're going to keep going until I change what you should be doing by sections. Here we go, section one. Ready? I have to use this one, right? Yeah. <laughs> Did you hear rain? It's kind of cool, right? Thank you. That was awesome. When was the last time that you created something impossible and made it possible? Pretty cool, right? The questions that I have up behind me are not the questions that I made up. They are questions by this very specific Nobel Prize dialogue event page. We're here today to explore these questions at the age of scientific and technological advancements. As we get ready to do that, I am honored to have this invitation to share with you where I believe the heart of education should be. It's simple, compassion. As a former English teacher, I thought it would be fitting to share my point with you in four different types of sentences in the English language. Let's see if you know them. First is an interrogative sentence which asks a question. My question to you, do you know what you believe in? These are some of the words that are found in the prestigious institutions all around the world some of which where our panelists come from. Do we live up to the mission, the vision, the core value statements that we put out there to the public? We collectively seem to believe that we care and that we should be focusing on bringing happiness to humanity and share social responsibility. Let's see if we can bring the words back. In looking at these words and at this very dialogue, we are about deepening the dialogue between the scientific community and the rest of society. The rest of society. That means the people who are on the margins, the people who cannot be here today, the people who actually can't even watch this on live stream. Are we deepening our dialogue with the rest of society or are we continually talking just amongst ourselves? 
if you look, we have care. We have happiness for humanity on here. We have creativity. Do we model that? Do we live up to our potential and what we say is important? Thank you for letting me pause as the slides catch up to where I am. <laughs> The second type of sentence that I'm going to address is an imperative. An, imperat an, an imperative gives a command. And my imperative to you, to the educators, is to be kind. Because we need to show kindness to our students in order for them in return to give kindness back to humanity. When the students walk into your classroom, regardless of where they're coming from because life is happening, do you welcome them into your classroom and make sure that they feel your kindness as you are trying to teach them anything at all? Because if we don't model that, then how will they learn? Charles Darwin, you might remember him, as a person who believes that the world is lived by the survival of the fittest. When you actually read The Compassion Connection by David Rakel, he points out that Darwin had actually, when it comes to humanity, it is the kindest that is the most important, that kindness is the foundation stone to social interaction. How are you kind to your students on a daily basis? Let's see if this will now catch up with me. Three is an exclama ex exclamatory sentence, which means that you exclaim with excitement like this. You're amazing. And we honor you and dignify you for the unique individual that you are, regardless of your race, gender, sexual orientation, ability, religion, age, because before any of these social constructs were layered into you, we see you as a creative human being first with endless possibilities. And when you fail, because you will, life pattern tells us that we do, we're going to lift you up so you can pick yourself back up and go at it again. You are amazing. The fourth and last type of sentence is a simple declarative, and a declarative simply makes a statement. And that statement You belong here. We can't put pause on life. There's no pause button. But students who come to learn from you, they come with their lives happening as they are trying to learn. Wherever they're coming from, can you make sure that the students feel they're exactly supposed to be right there with you? Mark Manson, the author of The Subtle Art of Not Giving a F, <laughs> says, we're responsible for experiences that aren't our fault all the time. And with that, life happens, but it's not about hoping for a life without problems, because that's impossible. Instead, it's hoping for a life full of good problems. Let's help our students see life this way. Students come in to learn while life is continuously happening. How can we ensure that we invite the diverse voices to the table and help shift perspectives and paradigms so that the world is hopeful, the future that we build is hopeful? Because without that, we cannot deepen our dialogue. And so we need to create a space where they belong. 
The future of our education rests on our ability to center compassion because without it, we cannot help learning to move forward. How you will you remember these four sentences? Let's review very quickly. One, remember to check what you believe in. Be kind. You're amazing and validate. You belong here. And remember, everything you can imagine is real. And when you doubt that, remember that today you made rain here in this space. Thank you so much. Thank you very much indeed, Liz.